join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the New Orleans Saints. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Here's a punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Vikings offense taking the field. They'll be led by Case Keenum. And Keenum, he's always kind of been that stopgap guy, sort of the second stringer with upside, if you will. He had a great college career. But, you know, you look at how he's putting it together now in Minnesota, the season they're having. I don't know. Case Keenum's looking pretty darn good. I like how you put it together, and a lot of people didn't think he had the upside. I mean, a lot of people saw him as a third guy, you know, that you could use in a pinch. But you're exactly right. The season he is having right now, I remember he told me one po at one point, he said, all I want is the opportunity to be one of those 32 guys that leads a football team. He said, I think I can do a pretty good job. <laughs> He's exactly right. He has Minnesota in the playoffs and tracking for a possible Super Bowl berth. And in their own stadium to boot. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. They go with Murray again. And an alley to run. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray is a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. second and two and that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut and he's a guy that has some height to him so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash makes it a lot easier to stay upright see the field and make a run as we just saw there defense and reading your keys you always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place sometimes your eyes can fool you how about that play action there that sprang the big guy didn't it able to dump it over the top to him Now a 
give. This is Murray. And he is knocked down from the side, right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Time to feature the offensive starters and to give some love to the tight end, Kyle Rudolph. He's been to the Pro Bowl already, battled a few injuries, but he's back and better than ever. Has added a little yoga to his regiment in order to make him more nimble. That makes it that much harder for the defenders to catch him. Keenum throwing on second. His throw caught at about the five. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Back at the six. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. From the five-yard line, will this opening drive yield six? This is third and goal. Hey, hey, hey. Hurry up, here we go. Green, ah! Now Keenum. He's got his man. It's taken in for a freaking touchdown. Just how they wanted to start this one in the end zone on their first possession. And that just happened. How about that play right there? As you said, opening possession, setting the tone for everything. Now I'm going to look forward a little bit now because everyone should be celebrating his catch in the end zone. The tight end gets a little bit of love. But if you're a receiver on the team, you should be thinking to yourself, boy, oh boy, things are going to open up the rest of the game if they have to focus on him as well. That time, a nine-play drive, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And yeah, he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here come the playoff-bound New Orleans Saints, led by Drew Brees. Double-digit wins this year for them. And, you know, this season has kind of answered the question, what could Drew Brees do with a really good running game? Well, he has a really good running game. Well, go back to 2009, when they were sixth in the league in rushing. Won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, and they thought they were going to have a three-headed monster because Adrian Peterson was there when this whole season began. And then you add in Alvin Kamara, the rookie runner, and Mark Ingram, who's been a constant, steady player for him. 
They get rid of Peterson around week six, and those two just absolutely took off. Ingram's over 1,000 yards as a rusher. Both of them are going to be over 1,200 yards combined from the line of scrimmage. You're exactly right. Give Drew Brees a running game, and New Orleans, heading down the stretch, has a very good chance of winning the NFC South. And down he'll go at the 25. It'll be a gain of four, and that'll make it a second down. Let's get a quick look at the Saints offense. Quarterback Drew Brees and head coach Sean Payton understand the passing game as well as anyone in the NFL, which led to a rating last year of number one in passing and number one in total overall offense. But the thing that they really do well is get the ball downfield. They understand holes in defenses, find receivers that way. But what they need to add, the running game, back to their mix. When they went to the Super Bowl and won it, they were number six in the NFL. Last season, number 16. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And now we get a look at the starters on the defensive side for Minnesota. And 2017 for this unit has been a good year. Not unexpected because their head coach, Mike Zimmer, what are, what are his roots? Defensive coordinator in the league for a long time. He was going to build with defense first. And look at the different levels he has. Linval Joseph, defensive tackle, stuffs any run game. At linebacker, Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr playing at Pro Bowl level in 2017. Then you get back to the secondary. Xavier Rhodes is a lockdown corner. And Harrison Smith at safety, I call him the fixer. Wherever they need to fix something on defense, they move number 22, and he makes plays. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. As you and I know from visiting a lot of camps, no one practices this type of a start, do they? Not, especially not on the road. You give up the touchdown on the opening drive. Now there's likely a three and out on your first possession. Yeah, you throw that incompletion there. You hate to fall into a hole early, especially on the road. Got to be careful. Now here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. Here's Sherrills. When it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice that it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. Play action here on first down. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Craig Robertson coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. second down and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete that would have been a great catch but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in and some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long From the gun, here's Keenum. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Now, before they can get settled in here, time expires. All the first quarter of action. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football, but likely not for long as they're in punt formation to kick it away. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. Oh, a nice spin. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On second down, here's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now Breeze on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. That was second down run for Murray. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Back to throw, Keenum. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. 
Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. here on first down and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down back to back nice plays 12 yards that time and a first down Side complete. It's Morgan. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. slot and letting him go to work and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Throwing on first down is Keenum. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Keenum now on first down. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Kyle Rudolph from 10 yards 
downtown. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Forbath to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 0. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And the gadget play gets him into the end zone. Four bath out to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thomas. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there as they move the chains. On first down, Breeze. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. second down. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. A 
He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Now Case Keenum in the offense heading back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. down Keenum going with a screen for Murray takes this up just short of the 30 but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle nice move now before the second down play we'll get whistles and a timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half and welcome back the offensive unit they took the timeout and now they get set to line up as we resume action So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Out of the gun, Keenum. And that is incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Saints signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you now to Orlando and our Tiburon Studios, where Larry Ridley standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Vikings are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Saints didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. 
first and ten. Robertson's got the sack here. This ends up as a loss of seven. Now first and ten. Rudolph's going to haul in the pass, and he kept off a long drive with the TD. That puts them on top by 14. First and 10, Newman's able to zero in on the QB here. This one ends up as a loss of six. So that'll do it from our EA Sports Studios. Time to get you back up to Minneapolis as we rejoin Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, a heck of a move. Oh, man. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they felt like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better. We'll find out. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Now Breeze throwing on second down. They've got his man complete. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores. But the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Tight 
Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they'll throw with Breeze. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great effort there. 30 yards. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Will Lutz on for the point after. And that one makes it 14-7. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken at the three. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you'd think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. It's lining up first and ten. Here we go now. Play action. Now it's Keenum. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly. Just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Keenum and Rudolph has it, the tight end. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Here we go now. Green, 39. Keenum to throw again. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. brought down getting this one up to about the 35 15 yards through the air and a first down He'll take this up to about the 37. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. The Saints on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Breeze. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Everson Griffin able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage, and it'll be fourth down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. The Vikings turn up the heat and they block it. It's picked up and this is a live ball, remember. And they are going to have the football right at the 10-yard line. Now, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. In however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. Now Case Keenum and the offense heading back onto the field. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. Keenum on first down. 
Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Keenum will try again on second down. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Trey Hendrickson able to get him for a loss of about three. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. This offense so far on third down, two for five to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Throwing now is Keenan. And Rudolph has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Forbath for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. Scoring summary three play drive, and it's polished off by a Viking score. Four bath out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And they're going to have good starting field position. He's out of bounds, but not before he's across the 35. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Let's face it, you can run the route tree 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here's Breeze to throw. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. So the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him in the inside half. And he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. To throw is Breeze. And that is incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run for it. It's Ingram. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Mark Ingram unable to get past the marker. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. And now out comes Minnesota. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. as he gets this down to the 41. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your play. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And Rudolph has it left side. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard, and you probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. All right, here we go. On third down, Murray. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Murray on first down and he'll get this down to about the 30 31 yard line a gain of three second down offensively with the lead you want to run the ball keep the clock going but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too right so how do you do that and not come back on your heels now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and seven. From 
the gun. It's Keenum. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another decline. third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Able to push his way through. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. On second down, here's Breeze. They go screen. This is Ingram. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 23 yards on the play. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So here we go, first and 10 now. Shotgun now for Breeze. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Thomas. And he gets this inside the 35 yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Fresh set of downs here. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now, Breeze again. Throw left side complete. It's Thomas. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Again, it's Breeze. And Hill with it over the middle. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Now Breeze. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him nine there on the first down completion. 
Breeze to throw again. His pass caught at the four. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. his string of seven straight passes completed. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. To throw, it's Breeze. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. some time here to focus on Kyle Rudolph as he heads back out there. All right, Charles Davis, what do we make of these numbers and what's happened to the big tight end here? Well, I think a lot of times we talk so much about adjustments and what you're going to do at halftime that maybe we miss what actually goes on because the sense is that, oh, they're going at the half, they just change everything. That's not really true. A Super Bowl winning quarterback out of New York always used to say, you've worked all week on a game plan. There's a reason you have it. Just either play it better or make subtle tweaks to it. Otherwise, there's no sense even going into a ball game. A lot of times that's what they do. Just find a little subtle thing, one little change, and maybe it can make things a little bit better. Murray. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Second down following the run. Again, it's Murray. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. And the Saints signal for another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third and a few inches. A handoff, it's Murray. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And play is stopped here. Timeout, it's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Yeah. 
Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Oh, and now he bowls him over. That's a 49-yard punt. Eight, though, on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Obviously a tough spot here. They need a lot of luck to win this game, but still a small chance. They've got to make sure they get the ball to the sidelines, get out of bounds, preserve clock. He goes underneath to Ingram, and he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll make it second down. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. False start, offense. So pin that one on the rookie right tackle. Remember those days when the right side was simply the run blocking side? Now you're dealing with some of the better pass rushers in the league. It'll make you a little jittery. second down and that one falls incomplete a 50 50 ball a little dangerous could have been picked now it's third down trying to go for the big one there on second down now they're likely down to their final two plays and you know they've got to keep going for the big shot right so defensively you play what they call top down nothing behind you make everything get completed in front The Saints on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and 10. Hey, no lady, no lady. There's Breeze. Incomplete. Both players were there offensively and defensively, but it falls incomplete. My man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. So Breeze is going to stay out there, and they're going to go for this on fourth down. Now Breeze, got to have this one. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. To his knee goes Keenum, and that should be the ball game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a